Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Roswell Church of Christ. Our worship is about to start. Good to see everybody. Good to see everybody. Is that Trevor? Bless you, bless you, bless you. God is working and he is moving. We have so many people that are here. A lot of moving parts to our worship. We're going to lift up the mighty name of the Lord. God is here today and we're ready to worship. We've got a word for you in store. God is worship and God is worship. And we're, we're going to lift him up today. I got some announcements. I need to give you, don't forget, the seniors are going bowling. I need to give you that information. They'll get it officially to me. I'll give you more information. We got a book coming out this week. A book that's coming out this week. We got a book that's coming out. We'll tell you more about that. It's a spiritual growth book. So uh, we want you to get that on Wednesday. The release date is on Wednesday. A path to spiritual growth and maturity. Uh, uh, growing a deeper faith with God. So we've been working on that. So it's ready to go. So we're going to be telling you how you can get that. Um, and so, uh, but Sister Pam Harris is buying the first copy, and so, uh, so we'll tell you more about that as we start today doing announcements. So God is working, and God is moving. He's working, and he is in the blessing business. So we're going to go ahead and get ready to go. Our song leaders are coming up. Our song leaders are ready to go. They're coming up, uh, and then we're going to, let's, let's lift them up. Let's support them. God is working. He's blessing. Bless you, bless you. Morning, Roswell. Morning. All right, anybody else ready to worship God? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, all right. So we're called. We're called. So we'll do three, three fifty-two. I'll be listening. <clears throat> when the Savior calls, I will answer. When He calls for me, I will hear Him. When the Savior calls, I will answer. Hilltops of glory, <clears throat> 348. Onward rejoicing, I tread life's way. A higher I'm climbing each passing day. You know that hilltop of glory now rise in view. Oh, where all shall be made new. Hilltops of glory I now can see, oh brother, oh brother, won't you come go? 
with me and I'll be safe on the mountain I soon shall stand hilltops of glory land you know that way down in Egypt mid burning sand Moses has started for Canaan's land never turn backward always a sin on to the journey's end. You know that hilltops of glory I now can see. Oh, brother, oh, brother, won't you come go with me and I'll be safe on the mountain I soon shall stand you know the hilltops of glory land and you know the hilltops of glory i now can see oh brother oh brother won't you come go with you guys sound beautiful safe on the mountain i soon shall stand where at the hilltops of glory land you know those footsteps of Jesus before us lead you know that we tread life turning his warning heed and evil allurement cannot Hilltops of glory land, you know the hilltops of glory, I now can see, oh brother, oh brother, won't you just come go with me and I'll be safe on that mountain, I soon shall stand where For while I was passing through and examining the objects of your worship, I also found an altar with this inscription, to an unknown God. Therefore, what you worship in ignorance, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything that is in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made by hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all people life and breath and all things. 
and he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined their appointed times and the boundaries of their habitation, that they would seek God, if perhaps they might feel around for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. Thank you, Antoine. Thank you. I don't know if you got that message. God is not interested in this building. God is interested in us, the temple. We are the temple. God is interested in a worship that comes from the heart. What's your thoughts? Don't make this just a routine, a tradition. I'm here. I'm in my seat. But my mind is every place. I want to draw your mind to a worship that's focused on God. Can we do that? God sees our heart. This morning, I want God to see me lifting him up. So we're going to bow our heads. We're going to clear our hearts. We're going to concentrate on the Savior. What has he done for you lately? You don't want me to start identifying what he's done for me. It would take the rest of the day. Sometimes I just stop and think. You know, he left me here when the doctor said I had cancer. God chose to leave me here. The other day, we were one second from a fatality. Someone ran a red light and it didn't dawn on me for 10 minutes later if I was one second earlier I probably wouldn't have been here. We take so many things for granted. So this morning take a moment God is worthy to be praised. Bow your heads with me. Father, we praise your holy name. We worship you. We love you. You're the God of all creation. You're the God that's going to send his son to gather his flock to take his church back to glory. You're the God that sent his son to die for my sins. I lift up your holy name. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Father, may we worship you in spirit and in truth. In your son's name we pray. Amen.
love, a matchless love. Oh, what love for me was shown. Passover and its meal was symbolic of the eventual sacrifice that Christ would make for all mankind. The sacrificial lamb had to be without any defects, just as Christ himself was without any defects. He had no sin. He was the perfect sacrifice. Upon Israel's deliverance from Egypt, they took the blood of the slain lamb and spread it upon the door frames of their homes, on its sides, and on the top. Exodus 12, and verse number 7. So that death would pass over their household. Listen now. When Christ was crucified, his blood was shed for the entire world, enabling mankind through their obedience to receive eternal life. Delivering man from the penalty of sin. So then spiritual death would pass over us. Because God now sees us through the blood of Christ. Whenever Israel would eat the Passover meal, it was in gratitude and in celebration of them being delivered from slavery in Egypt. And that God had allowed death to pass over them. Exodus 12 and verse number 14. In this same way, we should partake of this Lord's Supper with the mind that we are no longer slaves to sin, listen now, and have been delivered, not partaking of it as a ritual or habit, but truly realizing now the position God has granted me to be in that is in fellowship with him. And the only reason now 
why some of us right now don't celebrate and are not appreciative to what Christ has done is because we don't realize or understand we were slaves and that he has set us free and given us the gift of eternal life. I think sometimes we take this, this moment, this very moment, as something that should be very somber or sad. But I think we definitely should know the pain and agony. Now, don't get it, get it twisted. We should know the pain and agony Christ endured on the cross because he loves us. But I believe even more focus should be placed on the fact that he was victorious. And because he was victorious, Lord have mercy, we too are victorious. He wasn't just any man now. He was both God and man at the same time. Philippians 2 and 6. And because he did, did this for us, it should cause us to love him more and more. Realizing now, I am indebted to him because he took my place. Let's start recognizing Christ Church as our champion. Let me say that again. Let's start recognizing Christ as our champion and that he is truly the King of Kings and Lords of Lords. With those thoughts in mind, let us go to our Heavenly Father in a word of prayer. Dear God, we're so thankful, Lord, for this, this opportunity, Father. We're thankful for your son. Father, we know that you have allowed him, Father, to undergo a cruel punishment for us, Father, the punishment we all deserve, Father. But we're thankful, Father, that because of your love, Father, that we all sit here guilt-free, Father. We're thankful, Father, that you have set us free from the penalty of sin. We celebrate, Father, his resurrection, Father. We celebrate, Father, the opportunity to partake of this meal, Father. We're thankful, Father, for the fellowship, this communion. Father, we pray, Father, that you would please bless, bless them, the bread and the cup as we partake of it, Father. Let our minds be so in such a way, Father, that we would be truly appreciative, Father, of this moment, Father. Help us to understand, Father, the value of Jesus, Father. We're thankful, Father. We know you love, love us, Father. We, because you love us first, Father, we love you, Father. Forgive us all for our sins, Father. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Why did my Savior come to earth and give the humble glory? Why did he choose a holy birth? Now, if you can get with that, you can get with this. In terms of what God has done for us, he gave to us freely. 
something that none of us deserve. And so with that thought in mind, let us understand that giving is not about, we understand it's the giving of our monetarily, but it's more so giving of yourself as well. When that combined with your, with your giving, that is what God accepts. That's why he talks about give cheerfully, not grudgingly, right? God loves a cheerful, cheerful giver. And we understand our service to God. According to Romans chapter 12, we understand that's a reasonable service. The sacrifice is a living sacrifice, right? That's a reasonable service to God. So understanding when we give, give with the mindset and understanding what God has done for us. It should be nobody that has to be motivated to give when you understand what God has already done for you. Is that all right? Let us give with those thoughts in mind as the ushers comes around and as we collect the offering. Of course, there are several ways to give. I forgot to make mention of that. You see it on the screen, and we're probably all too familiar with it by now. But there's push pay, there's cash app, uh, dollar sign RCC Christ, RC Christ rather. Of course, your cell phone, you can text it RCOC 77977. And of course, we have the uh, communion and prayer drive through, a pickup rather, on first Saturday of the month. And then the in person, of course, you can also give in person. So there's several ways. I think we got you all covered. Multiple ways to give. Isn't it all right? All right. All right. Amen. I think we're going to sing a song or something while we're giving. I think. At this time, good morning, church. Good morning. At this time, we'd like to uh, release all the uh, children between the five ages of 5 and 12 for children's worship downstairs. Thank you. I am a hold fighting soldier and on the battlefield. And I am a hard fighting soldier and on the battlefield. I am a hard fighting soldier and I'm on the battlefield. So to Jesus, I the service that I Me, 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 since I'm here. If y'all don't mind. Oh, oh Lord, I come to receive patiently waiting. For the harvest, I got the Hebrews 11 and 1, that kind of faith, and it's mine, all mine, it's harvest time, oh Lord, I come to receive. See my blessing patiently waiting, patiently waiting for the harvest. The harvest is mine. 
I got the Hebrews 11 and 1. That kind of faith to go by blessing shall And it's mine, all mine. It's harvest time. Now I'm standing on your promises. I'm existing on your word. Everything that I speak, I believe. If you give it to me, for it's the Father, real good pleasure that the kingdom is mine. And it's mine, it's all mine, it's harvest time, oh Lord, I come to receive, to receive my blessing, patiently waiting, patiently waiting, for the harvest, I got the Hebrews 11 and 1. That kind of faith. And it's mine. All mine. It's harvest time. Now I'm believing for a great thing. You promised me. A long time ago, I, I know I I'm going to get it because the Bible tells me so. Boy, it's the Father, real good pleasure that the kingdom is mine and it's mine. It's all mine. It's harvest time. Oh, 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 Lord. I come to receive. Just really waiting for the harvest. I got the Hebrews 11 and 1. That kind of faith. And it's mine. All mine. It's harvest time. Thank you, y'all. Hey, hey, you say he's going to sing another song? to make heaven our home. Amen. And won't it be wonderful there? 356. Won't it be wonderful there? <clears throat> Have a letter. When with the Savior we enter the glory won't it be wonderful there? Ended the troubles and cares of the story. Won't it be wonderful there? Won't it be wonderful there? Having no burdens to bear. Joyously singing with heart bells on. Praise 
here that I'm here to preach. Uh, let's sing uh, 190. Sing it on. Every line is your own. Leaning on the everlasting hand. Have a letter sing. What a fellowship. What a a long time. If you're a senior saint, you've been leaning on the Lord a long time. Give God some glory right here. Raise your hand. If you've been leaning, you know it wasn't nobody but the Lord. I see. If Sister Shaw can raise her hand, somebody else ought to raise their hand. If Sister Shaw sees it, she's been leaning on the Lord a long time. 
God is good. God is good. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you for being here. We want to thank each and every one of you for participating in our worship today. I uh, need you to meet me in Jonah chapter 1. Meet me in Jonah chapter 1. Meet me in Jonah chapter 1. We've got two or three brief announcements. We need to pray and then we need to keep moving. Thank you all last week for all your prayers. And you got us guys through this service last week. You, got, you blessed us with your prayers. Mother's Day is tough for us, the younger guys, because we've lost our moms or recently lost our moms. And man, it's just it's, it's tough. So, but you prayed for us. You prayed for us and got us through. God is good. Kwame. Is that big brother Kwame Overton right there? Bless you, man. We know you. We're praying for you. We know that your daughter is, is, is we're praying for you guys. We're praying for you guys. Been praying for you. So good to see you. So good to see you. So good. We, you, it's on the stream at 630 on Thursday mornings. It's on Wednesdays praying for you and, and mentioned at church. So just been praying for you guys on this journey. Praying for you guys on this journey. Join me. Join me quickly. Join me quickly. I need to give you, I, I, I want to hold the announcement to the end. But, uh, so, you know, we've been working, and Sister Shelley's going to pull this up. We've been working on a, a project. We've been, we had to pull back some stuff. I learned, April, if you're going to be effective at something, you've got to pull back. You can't be everything to everybody. If you're going to really be effective at few things, so many of us, what's the old saying in our community, uh, 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 Stan, we're a jack of all trades but master at none. So, amen, you can't. And so, and so, and so, and so, well, we've been working on some writing, and we've been doing some stuff. And we've been praying, and some of you know this, but, but we got it finished, and we're getting it published, and the book will release. The book will release. Really, let me cut the light out real quick so you can see it. The book will release Wednesday, The Path to Spiritual Growth and Maturity, Solutions to Growing a Deeper Faith by Dr. Artro Harris. Don't, amen. God, hey, it's all him. We just hope it blesses people. We've got a preview copy of it today if you want to see some of it. But Wednesday, we need everybody to go and buy it on Wednesday through Amazon. The ebook is up, but don't buy it yet because Pam has to buy the ebook first. The ebook, if you go to Amazon right now, the ebook is up on Amazon. The ebook is there. We're having problems with the publication of the big book. Now, I got to recruit Shanae. I got to recruit, uh, uh, I got to recruit Shanae. I got to recruit Carol. I got to recruit Nancy because I need y'all to, and everybody to push this out. And Cheryl, push this out on your Facebook page. So it's 18 brief chapters on spiritual growth and maturity. It's been a labor of love to come up now. And I don't know if you've ever published a book. I'm just bragging on God. If you've ever published a book, it's got to be ISBN. It's been proofread. 12, 7, 8, 9, 10 times, and probably still an error. I know, Sister George, if you get it, and you're going to find, you're going to find, wait, wait, now, Sister Pearl and, and Sister Barbara. Now, brother, now, now, brother, Dr. Harris, you got, <laughs> so, but God is good. And we just pray that this blesses people. I need you to get it on Amazon on Wednesday. Now, Wednesday, I am already presenting this and other information at a church in Wichita, but I'm either going to tape our lesson early or stream you in with what we're doing Wednesday night. Because we want them to get the book as well. But we're already getting some good reviews on it. That it will help you grow in your spiritual walk. How many of you realize you need to grow in your spiritual walk? Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it is in information in like when I'm preaching on today, discernment. Praying more. Relying on God. Putting God first. Surrendering to God. Yeah. Fasting. Yeah. Um, other chapters in there. Loving your enemy. Amen. Forgiving. Amen. Trusting God. We hope that will really bless you. We're going to say a brief prayer. You're going to meet me in Jonah chapter 1. Sam, if you come on, hurry, hurry, Sam. And just lift us up in a quick prayer. I would sing a song today, but I ain't got but 13 and a half minutes to give you 30 minutes of sermon material. And if you could, you're going to need a mic. Darnell, yeah, just pray just for our group here. Just pray that we receive this word. And just pray that God just lifts us. And we hear this word today about discernment. That we hear this word about making spiritual decisions. Will that bless anybody today? About making critical decisions about your future. Let us stand together as we approach the heavenly Father. Let us stand together. <clears throat> Father, we come to you with humble hearts and humble yeah. minds. We just thank you, Father. Yeah. We thank you. Thank you. Thank
thank you. Thank you for allowing for each one of us to get up this morning yeah. and just and just come to this worship service. Yeah. Yeah. Father, without any type of persecution, Mercy. like our old saints used to face back in the day. Mercy. But Father, the devil is still strong. Yeah. But we thank each and every member here today. Mercy. Mercy. And the members that are tuning in online. Mercy. Father, we Help just us. we love you. We thank you for all Help. things. Help. Father, continue to bless this con congregation and the leadership uh, as we move forward and navigate through this, Help. this, Help. this, this wretched world. Help. Father, we, we, we just cannot cannot wait until you until we all hear those words that say, yeah. well done, well done. Good well faith done. Well done. Father, well we're done. trying. Forgive us, Father, of our sins. Mm -hmm. Bless us so that we may forgive. Mm -hmm. Father, bless us in our spiritual growth mm -hmm. and continue mm -hmm. to be with our brother or Trill Help. Harris. Help, Lord. We thank you. You, Father, for uh, just a special uh, shout out to you. Thank you for, for Sister Shaw stepping up. Yeah, 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 uh, thank yeah, you for yeah. my older brother, yeah, Paul yeah, 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 stepping yeah. up, my big brother. Yeah. And Father, thank you for all the things that you continue to bless us with. Lord, help us. But most of all, thank you for your son. Yes. 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 Thank, yes. You thank you for him volunteering. He said, Here thank am I. He you. sent me. Was not for that, we'd be truly mm -hmm. lost. Yes. Mm -hmm. We love you, Father, and we thank you for, yeah. for everything, including your word. Mm -hmm. This is my prayer in the Son's name. Let the congregation say black. Amen. 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 Bless you, bless you. Without you, Lord, without you.
the son of Amittai, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh and cry against that wicked city. But Jonah arose, made his own decision, did his own thing, paraphrase, edited version. Cry against Nineveh, that wicked city, but Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare and went down into it to go to Tarshish. From the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent a great wind on the sea. There was a mighty tempest on the sea. So the ship was about to break up. And the mariners were afraid, and every man cried out to his God. And through the cargo that was on the ship over to lighten the load. But Jonah was downstairs in the lower parts of the ship, snoring, snoozing, slobbering. I know that ain't in your text, but that was the text in Bible. So the captain came to him and said, hey, 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 bro, who is you and what, is, what you do? You need to get up and pray to your God. So they cast lots. Verse 9, Jonah said, I'm a Hebrew. I'm a preacher. I'm a prophet of the God who made the sea and the dry land. If you need a subject title today, I don't thank Sister Shelley for putting this. I said, hey, just put me some doors up there. The door of discernment. Yeah, yeah, there it is. The door of discernment. You know me, I got in late because I was with a celebrity yesterday, somebody very special to me, and they were invited to speak in St. Louis, and I was their chauffeur, Lord Jesus. So I got to chauffeur them around all day. I love, I, you know, I was starstruck, I was awestruck just to be with Sister Pam, say amen when you can. And, uh, and so as I got back, I was in St. Louis, Brother George, and I was trying to get to a Mardell, I was trying to get to a, a, a Home Depot because I wanted a door, but I really realized how was I going to make the door stand up, Charlie, and I just didn't need one door, I was going to need three doors. So I'm online about to order them, and I realized, Brother George, that doors are about $85 or $90 a piece. And door frames even more than that. So I said, I just best we better put it up on PowerPoint. We thought that was right. Because you know I'm a prop preacher. Decision making. What is your destiny? Probably this is the beginning of a series if this goes well. The door of destiny. The door of desperation. I want to talk about from a context of making spiritual decisions in your life that will help you and that will grow you. The year was a long time ago in the late 80s. I just happened to be sitting in my favorite barber's chair at the time. And I told you on many occasions that Oprah Winfrey's dad would cut my hair. And as long as I was in high school, as long as I was in college, he would cut it for free. And he said, you don't have to pay nothing, but you do have to come and sweep up hair. So I became a professional person sweeping up hair at the barbershop. One day I was in there and said, what are your plans for next year? I said, well, I was planning to go to Morehouse. I had talked my way into Morehouse. Don't tell Merle Bennekin that. He would be like, like, wait a minute, how did you get in Morehouse? I was also accepted at the University of Kentucky to run track. That's what I wanted to do. But I had a low ACT score. I needed one more point so I could qualify. I said, Mr. Winfrey, I called him Brother Winfrey. I said, you know, what I'm going to do is probably just go to Tennessee State for one year. Then I'll go to University of Kentucky and run track at the University of Memphis. 
that wasn't going to be able to pay for more house. He said, young man, you know, I got some pool out there. I said, yeah. He said, you know, my daughter has the scholarship, the Oprah Winfrey scholarship. I said, yeah. He said, I could just make an easy call for you, and, uh, you know, you could get four years or five years of free education. Brother George, I wasn't thinking right. I was still thinking I was going to go run track at the University of Kentucky because my good friend Bob Whalen was there, and he was a world-class miler. And at times, he thought I had the potential to be a world-class half-miler after running 152 in high school. I said, no, Mr. Winfrey, I think I got this under control. I'm just going to Tennessee State for a year, and then I'm transferring out of there. He asked me again, are you sure you don't want me to make a call, Mark? Maybe. Stan, I ain't thinking well. I wasn't considering all the Are you sure that you don't want me to make a call? Because you could get a four-year or five-year free ride, all tuition paid, scholarship, Darnell. And I'm sitting there looking a gift horse in the mouth. Sister Barbara, and I'm saying, no, I think I got it under control. I got another plan. He said, okay, fine, well, and good. Lo and behold, it happens that I will go and not spend just four years at TSU, but I will spend five and maybe a little bit more looking for scholarship money, needing scholarship money, could have got a refund check, could have got a TSAC refund check, could have had full ride and all my Pell Grant money would have came back to me. I had would have had full ride, room, board. Zoe, listen to me. McKayla, listen to me. Full ride, board, scholarship, refund check. Come to me. I could have bought a car. I could have been the BMOC big man on campus. But no, Mark, I wasn't thinking about the decision I made because the view I had of where I was going what the view that God had. Somebody ought to say amen when you can. Sometimes you're going to find in life you've got to learn how to make critical decisions on the fly with limited information. Sure, they, I wasn't going to stay. Corian, I know you're going to KU. Let's clap it up for that. You're going to KU, right? No, no, my bad. That's what I had on the internet. Don't believe everything you read on the internet. But you, but you got to go somewhere. Say amen when you can. All right. We're going to clap them up for graduating. I know we're going to do something bigger for them. Let's clap it up for all of our graduates. That's what, what I'm saying is simply this. I, I have an opportunity to go on a four-year full pay. Re I didn't know about refund checks. I didn't know that you had to go to the bursar's office and your bill had to be cleared before they released your credit. I had four or five years full ride on the Oak Women's Scholarship, not based on my academic progress, not based on the fact that I was an athlete, not based on the fact that I was involved in, 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 in student stuff in high school. It was based on who I knew. Is there anybody in here today that you need to know that you know a God that's able? You need to know that you got a, you don't need to know that you got a God who will bless you just because you know him. I'll close in a minute. I'll close in a minute. All opportunities going to come your way, not because you're so good, not because you're so smart. They're going to come. Yes, you got to work hard. Yes, carry on. You got to be three times better, four times better, five times better. Sometimes it's going to become who knows you and who you know. And when you know the Lord, he knows the path. But there was a dude named John. Who God spoke directly to him, verse 1. I'll close in a minute. God spoke directly to Jonah and said, Jonah, look at the text. Jonah, arise and go to Nineveh and cry or preach against that city. But Jonah said, no, nah, Lord, I'm, it's my thing and I'm going to do what I want to do. Jonah said, I'm not going to Nineveh. Now stay with me now. Stay with me. Stay with me. I'm teaching this today about discernment, making right decisions, under stress, under pressure, making decisions when you can't see all the variables, making decisions with the help of the Holy Spirit. Also, God, here's what I learned. Here's what I'm going to learn in the text. I got to give you a cliffhanger. God, when you're faithful, even when you make bad or poor decisions, God will still work to redeem you. Come here, somebody. When you are faithful and God knows your heart, I 
I can give you that in a minute. Is there anybody in here that you done made some messed up choices, but God stepped in and rearranged the variable? Come on, somebody. That's where you ought to be shouting. But there was a dude named Jonah who said, Lord, I don't think you know what's best for my life. I'll close in a minute. Lord, I don't think you know what's best. Tell you what I'm going to do. His stand, which is what Gavin was saying. The, the text says, and the Lord, and the word of the Lord came to Jonah. I wish God spoke directly to us like he spoke to them. That way we would make it clear. But he does speak to us through his word. And he does speak to us through his Holy Spirit. And if it comes from the Holy Spirit, it ain't never going to be wrong. But the question is, finna get deep right here. Are you where you need to be to receive okay. the word? Oh, don't miss that. Thank you, Sister Regina. Why <laughs> must want a word from God? But you ain't where you need to be to receive that word. Ooh. Okay, let me. That was a dude named Jonah. Mm -hmm. Go to Nineveh and cry against that sin. But hold on. I had to learn, Don, as we talked about it today. Corian, can you go in my office? On the back area printer, there's some, there's some, there's a, there's a, 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 a the little towel, wipe my face. Just in my office, find any one of them. Thank you. Here's what I had to learn, Donnie. I got to understand why Jonah, because I was jumping on Jonah early in my preaching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was just uneducated or not as critical thinking dude named Jonah. <laughs> Timmy, I had to understand why Jonah made the decisions he made. Because you just see it all right here, right now. You didn't see everything that went into his decisions. Some folks are making the best decisions. You got to learn how to make decisions in crisis. Touch your neighbor and say, make decisions in crisis. Thank you, thank you. Touch your neighbor. See, I like how you, I saw how you rocking your rags. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying? So I just put mine up here like this. You see what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I just put it like this. Well, Corey, I put it in my back pocket like this. Corey, on. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? All right, all right. Okay, back to normal. Back to normal. Let me share something with you about why he made the decision not to go. And if you've been in his decision, because we see everybody's decision because our lives are the sum of our decisions. Ooh. 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 Come here. This is possibly why he would have made this decision. Let me share this. Then I will share with you. Um, yeah, go to Nineveh, determining factors. First, they were not of Israel, they were Gentiles. He knew that if I went down there and was, had the Lord lost his mind, the Lord is telling me to go into unclean people. I'm a, a, I'm a clean person. Come here, somebody. I'm a, I'm a Jew. I'm a Hebrew among Hebrews. And, Lord, you want me to go down there to them. It gets good. Come here. Next, they were wicked and evil. The wickedness before. You want me to go talk to these crazy, wicked people. Sometimes the Lord is going to have you go up in a house and do a Bible study. Folk going to be drinking. They're going to be smoking. Say amen when you can. You're going to see power on the table. Say amen when you can. It's going to be some bricks up in there. Say amen when you can. i never forget I was in another city. Someone had passed away. They said, we need you to come to the family. Man, if the police had come up in that day, they would have said, I'm in there praying for them, trying to minister to them. And somebody kept going back into the closet. And then, you know, and somebody kept, I'm in here praying because somebody done been brutally murdered. And it was some church members. And, and, and I'm up in there, man, I don't know how much stuff they had in the closet. <laughs> come here. The determining factors. They were idol worshippers. God knew. Jonah said, man, them folks ain't going to leave their idols. Who are you, Jonah, to tell these folks who's going to turn around and who ain't? Come here. Next, they were ruthless. Oh, come here. It gets deeper. Get deeper. They were from the people of Nimrod. Nimrod was a stone-cold killer. He was a hunter. Jonah's like, you want me to go down there? Them the people of Nimrod? Nimrod just didn't kill animals and capture animals. Nimrod killed and captured people. 
And so now you see why Jonah may just be a little bit, to use a big word here, pensive, yeah. hesitant to go there. Okay, sometimes God is calling us to do something and it is fear. Like writing this book, man, I had to overcome my fears. But didn't it do? I had to put some other stuff on hold, not family and not the Lord. I had to put some other stuff on hold to be able to do this because it's going to be of greater work and greater value. It's about growing the church. It's about growing people. Come here. Let me give you something else. Compound it. They ain't going to listen to me. Have you ever thought that somebody wasn't going to listen to you? And you didn't go to them? Now, come here. Let me give you some thoughts here. Let me give you what would be the greatest decisions you're going to make. Write this down. I'm going to show you how to make them. And then I'm going to walk through Jonah. The greatest decisions you're going to make. The most of the criticism you make in your life is will you faithfully serve God? The most critical decision you're going to make in your life will you faithfully serve God? I'll close in a minute. What you don't see is the faithfulness part of it that God will even save you from your mess. That when you faithfully serve God and you will see him begin to rework and reroute stuff. Next decision, will you surround your life with people of faith? You show me who you're hanging out with, my teenagers, with. show me who you're hanging out with right now, and I'm going to show you what you're going to be in three to five years. Say amen when you can. I love all my old school homies. I love them all. I holler at them. I dap them up, Donnie. I give them they, what's up, man? I give them they props and respect, but they, some of them is, is still where they was is 30 years ago. And as we talked about, if you ain't careful, you surround yourself with rats. Here's what rats do. Rats bring disease. Come here, somebody. Rats bring sickness. Come here, somebody. And then when there ain't no food supply left, you know what rats do? Rats kill each other and they eat other rats. Oh, come here, somebody. That'll preach somebody somewhere my friends, some of you hanging out with some, oh, let me leave it alone. Who got a down here mentality and you trying to go somewhere else. Come here, somebody. I just wish it was some high school students in here that we trying to tell you something. You ain't going to make every decision right, but do your best. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here. Next, we're getting to get deep. Who you going to marry? Don't get quiet. Better yet, who gonna put up with you for the rest of your life? <laughs> okay, come here. I know this. It'll resonate in a minute. I'm gonna close. I'm gonna drop some stuff here. These are the critical questions. Are you gonna faithfully serve God? Who are you gonna surround your life with? Who's gonna be in your one foot circle? Because everybody ain't a friend. Everybody ain't a confidant. They might be an associate. They may be a friend. But everybody on Facebook ain't your friend. Who's gonna be a confidant? Who got your best interest card that'll hold you accountable? Who ain't trying to use you? Come here. Next, who will you marry? Will you start a family? Where will you live? Where will you work? What type of work are you going to do? Will you pursue your dreams and when will you pursue them? Jonah makes his decision. Not the best decision, but I'm going to show you so you know the story. Gets on the ship. Who, yeah, I'm a preacher. I'm a prophet. I'm a teacher. Bro, we got to throw you overboard. You caused all this harm. Come here. The demise, almost. Look at verse 15 of chapter 1. The demise, almost. 15. So they picked him up. They said, Jonah, what, you, what should we do with you? He said, I think you need to throw me overboard. Okay, keep reading. Verse 17. Then verse 16. Now the seas was raging. They threw him into the sea, and it was raging. Then, then men feared the Lord exceedingly that they may be offended at this sacrifice. Verse 17 is where it's going to preach. My almost demise of how God will bless you. This got me, Brother George. This got me, Donnie. This got me, Roy. And the Lord had prepared. Oh, come here. I, I've been, I, I misprepared. Oh. The Lord had prepared a fish. Young folks say big will. Let me close. Mm, mm, mm. You about missed it. The Lord had prepared deliverance. He done messed up. Didn't do what God wanted him to do. Okay. Hang on. He didn't do what God wanted him to do, but the Lord had prepared 
<clears throat> you got to be praying right here. The Lord had prepared Trevor. <clears throat> Albert Crawford, we ain't always, Sammy, we ain't always done what we're supposed to do, but the Lord had prepared. You didn't hear the language there. Roy, we ain't always been what we're supposed to be in. And we ain't always done right what we're supposed to do right. But the Lord had prepared, had prepared really. His God had already knew that Jonah was going to mess up. And God had already ahead of time preordained, pre formed pre-made a fish that would hold him and protect him. See, Jonah... The folks, they didn't want to put Jonah in the Bible because they was like, is this allegory? Oh, is it? Well, Donnie, I've been in some situations where if it, God had already prepared for my ignorance. God had already started to work out for my insecurities. God had already prepared. God prepared a fish. Is there anybody in here, Kwame Overton, the younger one, that you know that God prepared to save you a long time ago. Ooh, but it gets deeper. It gets deeper. Come here. God, I believe God was pursuing Jonah. God told him what to do. God was pursuing Jonah. Okay. Come here, I'm going to come back to that. Jonah stole over in chapter 2. This is where Jonah starts to pray. The deliverance. God prepared a big fish, appointed ahead of time. Jonah prayed. Most of you just read chapter one. You don't read chapter two. I'm closing. Then Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Mm -hmm. Jesus makes this same analogy. Somewhere in Matthew, pull it up for me, Don. They'll text it to me. Jesus makes this analogy about being in the grave for three days and you know what I'm talking about. Come here. Come here, somebody. You didn't see it. Two and one, Jonah begins to pray. Here's what Jonah said. He kind of repents. Oh, y'all ain't with me. Here's what Jonah said. I'm in the belly of this big fish. Verse 1, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction. Ooh, you know what some guys in here, we ain't, we, we ain't sorry. We just mad we got caught. Huh? Ain't nobody going to say nothing. Ain't nobody going to say nothing. Ain't nobody going to say nothing. There's some folks in here, you ain't really sorry. You just mad you got caught. Back in the text, Jonah prayed. Jonah prayed. I cried out because of my affliction. He heard me two and two. The flood surrounded me two and three. He said it's so deep I saw the mountains in the ocean. You think God put mountains in the ocean? Well, this is what the text says. There's mountains in the ocean. Two and six. Verse two and seven. My soul fainted within me. So the Lord spoke to the fish that God had already prepared. You got to know that when you're faithful, you got to you begin to get faithful, even on bad decisions. God will send people, stuff, to get you out your mess. You got to want to get out your mess. Mm, somebody ought to know that he's a God of second chances, Willie. That here is Jonah. God could have, God told him, go and preach to them crazy, wicked folks in Nineveh. Remember, he didn't want to go because they were rough. Because they were Gentile. Because they worship idols. God is sometimes sending you places where he's using you for his greater glory. I'm going to talk about decisions in a minute. Watch this. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here, come here. Then, so the Lord spit him out. Verse 10. Spoke to the fish and vomited Joseph out on dry land. Now, can you imagine that he is in there? He gets out. He has to walk now to go on the journey. Chapter 3, the new direction. Chapter 3. Can you imagine this dude getting out with all this seaweed on him? <laughs> can you get, can you, you got to understand the text. Can you see him all, oh, he about half white? Because he's been in the belly of this fish for three days. Can you see him with fish algae and sardines? And, uh, walk in down here to preach. Here's the point. You might not look like just yet what God wants you to do. But if you start headed in the direction, God will fix the path for you. Oh, ain't nobody going to shout. That's okay. I'll close on home. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here, come here, come here. It's a three-day journey. Three days journey to get to that city, three and one, to preach. Nineveh, he went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Finally, I'll tell you somebody, finally. Ultimately, God is going to, he's going to get his glory at you. 
ultimately you're going to do what God wants you to do. But he still has a little bit of this other stuff in him. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Now come here, come here, come here, come here. The decision making, he, he, he repented, three and five. He repented. Let's see if I got that right here. So they repented. So the people of Nineveh believed God. This makes Jonah mad. Jonah got mad. This makes me go. Jonah got mad. Because in 4 2, Jonah said, God, that's why I didn't want to go down there first. Because if I knew I'd have went down there and preached to them, look at the text. I knew they was going to repent, and I knew that you were gracious. And I know that you got an unending love for somebody. Some of y'all don't miss y'all shout. He said, look, let me read the text so they ain't they confuse it to you. They ain't confuse it. What, what, what you talking about? This the same people, Joel. If you get to the end of it, if you get to the end of 4 and 11, he said, Joel, I sent you down there because they don't know their left hand from their right hand. Somebody ought to say amen to that. But 4 and 2, he said, he said I felt previously didn't want to go to went to Tarsus, for I know that you are gracious. And merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in love and kindness. They repented in five, and three, five, six, and seven. Have you ever thought that somebody wasn't going to change? You just do what you're supposed to do, and you watch what God will do. Come here, somebody. And is there anybody in here? You said somebody. You that somebody that once you got to know God better, once you got to know His goodness better. Once you got to know how to make better spiritual decisions, you change the door of discernment. Come here, let me get you. Seventh grade, this is where you get your pencil out. And you start to write. How do I make better decisions? Jonah didn't want to go because Jonah was still tripping. He's still tripping. Now you done saved him, Lord. Now I'm mad. So he makes him see Jonah sitting on the broom tree. Let him sit there and rest. Then God sent a worm and ate the tree. Jonah's still mad. Come on, Jonah. Watch this, now let me close with how to make better spiritual decisions. This is where I want to talk to all my high school, middle school, 8th graders, 9th graders, 10th graders, 11th graders, 12th graders, 15th graders, 17th graders, 21st graders. Uh, everybody up in here is going to be making some critical decisions because you're making decisions about who you're going to marry. You're making decisions about neighborhoods you're going to live in. You're making decisions about what schools you're going to go to. Young people, you're making decisions about who you're going to date. You're making decisions about what kind of job and career. But I'm going to give you five to seven things, and then I'm going to close about making real good spiritual decisions because there's a whole bunch of opportunities that are going to come your way, and you got to decipher, is it of God or not? You have to decipher, young people, is it of God? If anybody in here right now, you have to make some big spiritual decisions, and you just can't make this decision based on your own because you done seen the old decision-making capacity that about messed your life up. Anybody in here done made some bad decisions? Come on, somebody. You bet. Anybody here done made some horrible decisions? But you see, you're rebuilding now. You like Jonah. He wants you to go do this, but you're going to do your own thing. But God has preserved you. God has brought you back from the depths of of a messed up situation. Let me give you seven things and I'm going to close about the door of discernment. What is discernment? Discernment is making spiritual decisions based on information through the Holy Spirit. Discernment is me having a clear mind about what God wants me even when the picture ain't clear. Discernment is making spiritual decisions on a high level. Decisions that will honor God. So let me give you some variables to think about, then I'm going to do the lesson yours. Does this re decision reflect the word of God? What has God's word said about do me doing this? Well, it's yes, no, maybe. It might be okay. Okay, keep stay with me. Here's a new one. Does this decision reflect the fruits of the spirit? Love, joy, peace, self-control, goodness, kindness. Ooh, have I really deeply prayed and fasted about this decision? Okay, come here, I'm close. Corporate, because sometimes you got to talk corporate for people to get to spiritual. What are the risks versus rewards? What are the risks versus the rewards? Come here. 
what will I become if I get this? Success is good. Go after it. But if you don't add the Lord to your success, yeah. let me tell you what you're going to be. Successful. <laughs> Have you ever seen people who got everything but really ain't got nothing internally? I'm all about coming up. I'm all about getting a bag. But you got to do it respectfully within God's arena. Because when people are always talking about the next come up and the next this, that, and the other, I don't know how many books it's going to sell. I don't know. If don't number one sell, I'm all right. If ain't number one person, all right. Now, somebody here needs to buy some books. Say amen when you get right. <laughs> Somebody needs that. But no, what I'm saying is we took so much on success that we forget that it's called the poverty of wealth. Oh, somebody ought to say amen. Let me explain that to you. You got all the stuff in the world, all the things in the world. You got the smoothest this and the smoothest that and the smoothest car and the this, that, and the other. It's called the poverty of wealth, but you ain't got nothing else. What will I become if I get this? We'll take it deeper. Since I've had this, or since this person has been in my life, have you increased since Lydia's been in your life? Your answer got to be yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Since you've been dating him, since you still dating, I know y'all married, but y'all still dating. Since you've been with him, has your life increased? Yes, sir. You, you can't answer for her. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me close. You see, if you've been with this person, this person has brought you nothing but drama, mess, you ain't got no peace. This person taken away from your spirit. This person, your finances don't went down. Your credibility don't went down. Your ability to process stuff don't went down. I don't know if this is the person for you. Let me say this. Some of you in here right now are so lonely. You couldn't buy a relationship if you had all the money in the world to pay for it. You couldn't buy a relationship. And some of you don't need no relationship. You need to get you whole and healthy. Worst thing in the world is get out of one relationship and jump back into another relationship. Go from relationship to relationship to relationship. Now let me close. Let me get back to thinking clearly. Then I'm going to close. Because what I said last week, boy, some of y'all called me. I'll say it again this week. Oh, it's going to get deep right here. It's going to get deep right here. It's going to get deep. And I'm going to leave it on this. It's going to get deep. And some of you last week was, I think I need to call him about that. But it's going to get deep. Get this one right here. Before I make this decision, have I consulted with mature Christians? Let me say it again. Have I consulted with mature Christians? Let me say that again. In making this decision... Have I talked to folks that got more knowledge than me? Got more wisdom? Let me tell you something. Your homeboys ain't been no farther than you. <laughs> Who was that in the Bible? The king. The new king. Who was that? Jeroboam. No, no, Rehoboam. Rehoboam. Jer Re Jeroboam's son, right? Was it Rehoboam or Jeroboam? No, Jeroboam and Rehoboam. Huh? Who listened to all them young cats and messed the kingdom up. It was Jeroboam, right? No, Rehoboam. Jeroboam's son listened to a whole bunch of his advisors. Carry on. Like, listen to a bunch of people your age about what you're going to do with your career. Like, you know, I think, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. I just think, I'm just, and you listen to 27 people your own age. Your people your own age ain't been nowhere. I ain't calling you out of nothing I know you're saying. Okay, let me talk to my child. <laughs> Folks in your age ain't really never been nowhere, baby, ain't got no experiences. You need to talk to some people with some wisdom and knowledge. Your mom ain't going to tell you on your daddy. I know you say, oh, Lord, okay, I'll buy you dinner. I'll buy you dinner. I'll buy you dinner. I learned don't call him out too much. Let me close. Come here, come here. Discernment. Is that real? Talk back to me. One thing you learned today and I'm going to close. One thing you learned today and I'm going to close. Okay, one thing you learned today. Either I was not clear. She said, Jesus, amen. Making right decisions. One thing you learned today. This ain't what we normally do. One thing you learn today. 
Get some wisdom from old people. <laughs> Submission from the Lord will prevent some trials. Submission from the Lord will prevent some trials. What else, what else you learned today? Make spiritual decisions. Make spiritual decisions. Don't make all decisions based on the flesh and have everything. Look, what else, what else you learned today? I'm closing. If, I, if y'all don't get this this week, I'm coming back next week with the same lesson. <laughs> huh, what was that, bro? Man, listen to older people because they got your best interest because you running with these little young G's, they ain't been nowhere, dog. They still wet behind here like you with the towel, just like me, bro. You got to listen to some folks who got some wisdom. And, here's, and, and, let, me, and let me buttress that point. That know you, that what mess you up. Where my, where my people at? That know, listen to people that know you because you're going to be doing some stuff, doing crazy, pursuing a business venture, dating somebody, and somebody going to come to you that know you and going to say, that ain't good for you. That know you. Somebody ought to shout right there. Somebody who know you and know the Lord because they're going to say, bro, I done watched you grow up and I done watched you. Say, you just doing that because that's just something to do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, you got no good preaching when you hear it. One last thing, and I'm going to close. One last thing. Even if you mess up, God will prepare a way for you out because you're faithful. And he knows you ain't just purposely saying, I'm just out to mess my life up. Yes, sir. Now, this is going to be good. This is Luke. This is going to be good. What, Luke? What's up? Ooh, shout, man. What you say, Luke? If a how old, how old is he? Eight say, follow God's directions. If an eight-year-old can say, follow God's directions. But the problem is, you ain't in the word of God because I asked you earlier. You making this decision on you where you need to be with God. All right, let me close. If you're here today, I'm going to say it way too much. I'm trying to close. We got to do announcements. If you're here today. And you need to change your life. And you've been making bad decisions. One thing I love about God when you're faithful, He'll bring you through. He'll give you chance after chance after. How many of you are on your third chance? Fourth chance, fifth chance, tenth chance, two hundred and tenth chance, four hundred thousand. Some of y'all like me, you about on chance a half a million. And God is still sustaining you. God is still sustaining you. If you're here today and you need prayer, you're in two categories. You need prayer. Three, you're praying for someone else. You, uh, you want to be baptized for a mission of sins. I had two baptisms the prior week, and they're studying. Y'all still studying, Y'all studying with the person today? They're studying with someone today. Pray for them. You want to come to the Lord, you come by hearing. Believe. Mark 16, 16 says, He that believeth that is baptized shall be saved. Repenting. Luke 13, 3 says, I tell you, nay, except you repent, you shall likewise perish. We're going to confess, Matthew 10, 32, that Jesus is the most important name on mortal tongue. We're going to be baptized. Here's what we've done. But George, you said something to me. You said, I focus a little bit more on change and repentance. We have to. We can focus on just getting them in the water, but if we don't focus on them changing, if we don't focus on discipling them, if we don't focus on the change that needs to change, because all we're really trying to do is just, you know, sometimes we manipulate them, just get them in the water, and then they spiritually institutionalize, Brother George, they don't think they got to change. No, the Lord wants you to change. I talk about that in the book. So if you're here today, and you know you need to change, you know your discernment ain't what it needs to be because you ain't where you need to be because when you ain't where you need to be with God you can't see clearly discern. You can't see the options clearly because we're led by the flesh. We're led by looks. We're led by the aesthetics. And you can't discern. As old folks say, discern. Anybody ever heard old people say discern? You know what I'm talking about. You know what they were talking about. Boy, you ain't discerning. Big mama, that's a word. <laughs> Boy, I raised you. <laughs> if you're here. If you're here.
want to think deeper about your walk. I want to think deeper about discernment. Deeper about your relationship with God. Deeper about the choices we make. And then quit beating yourself up over bad choices and let God redeem you. Start to understand and work in his love and his grace. If you're here today, prayer requests have come up. We're going to go ahead and get ready to close out because I know we got a couple announcements. Earlene Valentine says, I'm, I'm a church member. I'm seeing and asking for forgiveness and prayers. I'm asking for prayers for a friend, Sherry. Her mom is in the hospital that's very sick. And praying for my client, Miss Caven, Miss Caven or Karen. She's also in the hospital sick, praying for Sherry's family. And there is, uh, there is, their mom is in the hospital very sick. Prayers uh, for the family every day. Also, we got a praise report. Praise report. Last week, Sister Cole was in the hospital. Last week, she was having some major issues with her health. But Sister Cole sister, is here today. Sister Cole is here today. And we just go, you got to praise God because God does deliver. You got to know that God will deliver. Yeah, Sister Perlin was keeping us updated, but she's here today. Tommy McLaughlin, please pray, please pray for my wife, Katie, as her arthritis is causing her much pain. Susan Davis is, I desire special prayers for the church for improved health, increased strength, confidence, and courage. Amen. Natasha Banks, I desire the special prayers of the church for safe travels, praying for safe travels on a journey to Mexico tomorrow for a week. Well, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. All right, all right. Others on the prayer stream. Cheryl Darnell, bless you, Cheryl. We trying to call you, Cheryl. How are you doing, Cheryl Darnell? We trying to call you. We got to make sure we got your number, Cheryl. We miss you. We miss you. We miss you, Cheryl. Everybody say, we miss you on three. We miss you, Cheryl. One, two, three. We miss you, Cheryl. Cheryl, we miss you. We miss you, Cheryl. That's just how we roll it now. We sincere about this stuff, man. We just, this is the love of a church, man. It's got to be that way. You got to grow. You got to love people. You got to care for people. You, you got to let folks know that this is a safe environment. And we accept all. And God is doing the changing. Bless you, bless you. Let me read this. Nancy George, please pray for my Aunt Dorothy Brown for her health and place in her home. Please pray. And her daughters and granddaughters are here today. Let's keep Dorothy Brown in prayer. Cheryl Darnell, um, pray for me. An old Irish poem, may the road rise to meet your feet and shine upon your face again. Bless you, bless you. Nancy George, bless you, bless you. Latrice Carter, pray for us. Preach, Brother Harris. Cheryl Darnell again, bless you, Cheryl. Um, if there's others that need prayer where you are, just raise your hand. Others that need prayer where you are, just raise your hand. I know I am seven minutes over my time today. Others, you know, they're still coming in on the prayer request. Either stands, he's got the announcements, and I've got one more. So we're just trying to make sure we got everybody covered. Uh, uh, Cheryl says, I miss you guys too. Hope to be back. She says, next week. Amen, 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 amen. Um, so let's be ready to dismiss. Donnie, if you could come and give this prayer for us. You grab Darnell's mic. Oh, she, he got Sinead's mic. Bless you. Got it. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. And don't forget, next week is Brandon is the anniversary at Greater Metro. Two weeks. Two weeks. Is that, is that right, Darnell? Two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. And you preaching there, right? Uh, over the south. You at the yeah. south. Okay. 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 So uh, Donnie's going to pray us up. Stan's coming forth with announcements. And then we're going to make a couple of brief announcements. And we will go from there. Any visitors? Any visitors? We'll do that in just a second. Donnie's coming. Donnie's coming. Let us bow. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Gracious Father, we come to you, dear Lord. We have a lot of requests. You know our hearts. You know what's on our minds, dear Lord. Be with us. Guide us. Walk with us. Protect us. Be with our youth, dear Lord. Forgive us for all our sins. I might not remember everybody's name, dear Lord, but you know what's on the He knows. He knows. Be with us, dear Lord. These blessings in the Almighty name. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's get ready to dismiss real quick. Wednesday, they're going to put it back up. Wednesday is the release date on the book. I need you to get it. I will have copies next week. For those of you who want personal autograph copies signed, I will sign your book for $79.95. No, just saying. Just saying. 
I want you to get the book. I think it'd be blessed she's put it up there. The spiritual path to the path to spiritual growth and maturity. Solutions to a deeper faith. Dr. J. A. Harris. Many of you looking for R. Troy Harris. It's on Amazon Kindle right now. Google it on your phone. Sister Pam's buying the first copy, and then you can start buying them. I'll have them Wednesday. We're gonna load you up with I'm in Wichita Wednesday night. Get it. The paperback should load today or tomorrow. The paperback, I will have some of them next week. I'll have some of them next week with me. Um, I will have some of them next week with me. Also, I need to announce another, uh, another young man graduated. I know we're going to do a graduation ceremony, uh, but Darion, Darion Brooks graduated eighth grade. Where are you at? Darion, Darion Brooks. Darion, stand up, bro. Stand up in the seat if you need to, bro. Represent eighth grade. Eighth grade. Eighth grade, eighth grade, eighth grade. Yes, ma'am, I see people. There's somebody else. I know we start. They said, don't call them out. They said, leave them alone. Don't call them. Grandma said she let them know. He, no, no. Joseph and Jamel Wilson, they graduated. Okay, Joseph and Jamel Wilson graduated like eighth grade or something. Stand up. Ninth grade. Amen. Joseph and we're glad to see you, Papa. We're glad to have you. All right, all right. Okay, so. Uh, okay. Elk State. Right. I, I just want to say that all the graduates, we're going to recognize all the graduates, and this will take place on next week. So if you have graduated, uh, if you want to see uh, Deacon Bill Davis, make sure you see Bill Davis before you leave. This, or if they're not here, someone please get their names to Deacon Gil Davis. We're going to recognize all our graduates on next week. Okay, uh, first announcements. Mature adults will resume their monthly breakfast at Golden Crowd. This will be on June the 3rd. And the following Sunday, we'll, we'll continue to have our monthly meeting downstairs. Attention all singles. There will be a ministry meeting that will be today immediately after worship service. Please meet down front. Downtown Church of Christ, with two adults, will, will visit its first annual pancake fundraiser. This will be on the 17th of June from 9 to 11. Please plan to support the effort, donation, uh, or $10. Next Sunday, the 28th, all sisters are invited to log on to Zoom for the monthly class. Special guest is Sister Marilyn Graham out of Mississippi. Uh, nor do you want to miss our spiritual field devotion with young ladies of Roswell. Attention Roswell sisters, please mark your calendar for a women's meeting. This will be on next Sunday, the 28th, immediately after worship service. Roswell seniors, let us support the downtown church of uh, Christ and mature adults uh, breakfast fundraiser. Uh, this will be, uh, I just think I read this. Uh, it will be, uh, fundraiser will be sponsored by uh, world famous Chris Cates. Shout out for May birthdays. I know we have recognized some that are already uh, who've had birthdays in May. We also want to uh, recognize well, on the 22nd, Brother Ed Benton and Sister Estella, Estella Jennings. <laughs> Yeah, Red Ben, make sure we don't forget that. Uh, Sister Beverly Block will be on the 28th, and Sister Nancy George on the 29th. And let us reach out to all of our sick and shut in and bereaved amongst us, uh, the poor in spirit. Let brotherly love continue. This is all of our announcements. Are there any more announcements that need to be made that we are dismissed? Oh, well, hold, we have one more. May 26th. May 26th, Brother Terry. All right. I'm a visitor, I'll tell you.